The Corona Viridae is a family of viruses that infect a wide range of mammals and birds worldwide. <coughs> Until recently, most diseases caused by human coronaviruses were mild and the symptoms were limited to a common cold. In 2003, an outbreak of a novel disease, SARS, was shown to be caused by a new coronavirus, now known as SARS coronavirus. This outbreak generated renewed interest in coronaviruses and the diseases they cause. SARS stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. The primary mode of transmission of the SARS coronavirus is through droplets that spray out when an infected person sneezes or coughs. <coughs> SARS coronavirus can become airborne or be transmitted through contaminated objects. And there are also indications for transmission via the fecal oral route. SARS coronavirus particles carried in droplets may be inhaled. Inside the body, the particles travel to the primary site of infection, the epithelium of the lower respiratory tract. SARS coronavirus particles are enveloped, spherical, and about 130 nanometers in diameter. The envelope consists of a lipid bilayer with viral envelope proteins inserted into it. The outside of the envelope is lined with spike-like projections. These are all made of trimers of the viral spike glycoprotein S. S can be divided into three structural domains. A large external domain, which is responsible for binding to specific cell receptors, a transmembrane domain, and a short cytoplasmic domain. The envelope also contains the transmembrane glycoprotein M. M spans the lipid bilayer three times. Only a short domain of M is exposed on the exterior of the viral envelope. The rest is located in and under the lipid bilayer. Finally, another viral protein, E, is present in the envelope, in much smaller amounts than the S and M proteins. It's a short transmembrane molecule that is largely embedded in the lipid bilayer and is thought to be able to form an ion channel. Inside the virion is a single-stranded positive sense genomic RNA. The RNA genome interacts with a nucleocapsid phosphoprotein N to form a long, flexible, helical nucleocapsid. The first step in the viral life cycle is the binding of the virion to the plasma membrane of the target cells, and most specifically to the cell's receptors. The S protein of SARS coronavirus binds to angiotensin converting enzyme 2. ACE2 is a protein molecule that the host cell carries at its surface for other purposes. The virus uses this receptor in order to attach to the cell surface and enter the cell by endocytosis. During endocytosis, the endosome becomes progressively acidified. At the right pH, the viral S protein mediates fusion of the viral envelope with the endosomal membrane. Through this fusion event, the nucleocapsid carrying the viral genome is released into the host cell's cytosol. On the SARS coronavirus genome, at the 5' end, we find an untranslated region. The first nucleotide of the untranslated region has a methylated cap, which is important for ribosome binding. Another important part of this region is the transcriptional leader. Then follows the protein coding region of the genome, which is divided into at least 14 genes. The biggest part of this genome, open reading frame 1A and open reading frame 1B, encodes the viral non-structural proteins. The non-structural proteins are the enzymes that will eventually form the replicase transcriptase complex which directs genome replication and subgenomic RNA synthesis. The rest of the coding region codes for the structural and accessory proteins. Finally, at the 3' end, we find another untranslated region, which ends with a poly-A tail. 
So the SARS coronavirus genome is positive stranded with a cap and a poly A tail. In other words, once inside the cell, it can act as messenger RNA and be translated by cellular ribosomes. With the help of cellular translation factors, the small ribosomal subunit attaches to the cap at the 5' prime end. As soon as it reaches the ORF1A AUG initiation codon, the big subunit joins and translation begins. First, only ORF1A and ORF1B are translated, but not in equal amounts. Because ORF1A and ORF1B do not constitute a single reading frame. A reading frame is a sequence of codons, consisting of nucleotide triplets. The ribosome translates the codons into the amino acid sequence of the encoded protein. ORF1A begins with a translational start codon at its 5' prime end and continues up to a stop codon where ribosomes actually fall off the messenger RNA template. ORF1B is positioned in the minus 1 frame compared to ORF1A, but it doesn't have a start codon. So in order for ORF1B to become accessible for translation, ribosomes translating ORF1A need to make a so-called frame shift. The frame shift occurs in the overlap region of ORF1A and ORF1B. There, the RNA is folded into a rather complicated tertiary structure, a so-called pseudonaut. The pseudonaut contains the ORF1A translation termination codon. And just upstream of this RNA structure, we find a sequence of nucleotides known as slippery sequence. Although slowed down due to the presence of the pseudonaut, 70 to 80 percent of the ribosomes will reach this junction and translate the slippery sequence undisturbed. They will continue, find the stop codon, dissociate, and translation is terminated. Hence, these ribosomes will translate only ORF1A. But the remaining ribosomes, as they are forced to pause at the slippery sequence, will slip back one nucleotide and continue to decode ORF1B. This is called ribosomal frame shifting. Let's see exactly what happens at the nucleotide level. Two tRNAs carrying amino acids L and N are base paired to the messenger RNA at the last two codons of ORF1A. During frame shifting, they will slip back while still retaining two of the three base pairs. Then the next tRNA, carrying the first ORF1B encoded amino acid R, comes in and translation continues from there. This minor shift in the reading process causes the ORF1A stop codon to go unnoticed and translation can continue until the end of ORF1B. The ribosomal frame shift mechanism regulates the ratio between ORF1A and ORF1B encoded products. Compared to ORF1A, ORF1B has only 20-30% to chance of being expressed. These translation products of the replicase gene are called polyprotein 1A and polyprotein 1AB. Two protease domains are integrated in this protein chain and their role is to release the individual viral enzymes from the polyprotein. For example, they cleave the RNA polymerase subunit and the helicase. These are all non-structural proteins and they are directly involved in virus replication. Together with the template RNA, they form an RNA protein complex called the replication transcription complex, which attaches to modified intracellular membranes. Double membrane vesicles like these ones are the result of extensive changes in intracellular membranes induced by coronaviruses. They are thought to serve as a scaffold for viral RNA synthesis and to generally help in the organization of the viral life cycle. 
Such membrane modifications are a characteristic of all positive strand RNA viruses replicating in eukaryotic cells. The three prime end of the template RNA is the initiation site for the polymerase to start copying the genome. Initiation is followed by elongation, during which the polymerase makes a complementary minor strand and finally termination. After the full length minor strand is produced, it can be copied by polymerases to produce more positive strands. Some of these will serve as templates for translation or more minor strand RNA synthesis and some will eventually become encapsidated in new variants. But before a new variant can be assembled, the structural proteins must be produced. The template RNA is not only copied into full-length minor strands, but is also used to make subgenomic minor strand RNAs. First, the body of the subgenomic RNA is copied from the three prime end of the template. Then the transcription complex jumps to the 5' prime end of the template. There RNA synthesis is resumed to add the complement of the leader sequence. But how does that happen? There are short conserved sequences between the open reading frames in the 3' prime proximal region of the genome RNA. These regions are six nucleotides long. They are identical to each other and identical to a sequence at the three prime end of the leader. Each of these sequences is called body transcription regulating sequence or body TRS. And the leader sequence is called leader TRS. Each time the body of a subgenomic minor strand RNA is made, the body TRS is the last sequence to be copied. Then the nascent subgenomic minor strand RNA jumps. And the complement of the body TRS base pairs with the leader TRS. Next, the complement of the leader is added to the three prime end of the nascent subgenomic RNAs. Eventually, eight different minor strand subgenomic RNAs are produced. They all have the complement of the leader at their three prime end. This sequence presumably contains recognition signals and ensures that they can all be transcribed into plus strand subgenomic messenger RNAs. These messenger RNAs form a so called 5' prime and 3' prime coterminal nested set meaning that they have identical 5' prime and 3' prime sequences, but contain a variable part of the genomic 3' prime region between these constant terminal sequences. Structurally, each messenger RNA, except for the smallest one, contains multiple open reading frames, which could be translated into different proteins. However, Generally, only the 5' prime located open reading frame of each messenger RNA can be translated into protein products. During translation, a stop codon at the end of the first reading frame makes ribosomes fall off and renders downstream reading frames non-accessible for translation. In other words, these messenger RNAs are structurally polycystronic but functionally monocystronic as only the very first reading frame is translated. As soon as sufficient viral structural proteins are produced and enough new genome copies have been made, the new variants can be assembled. The envelope proteins are translated on the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum and are partially inserted into the lumen of the ER. Then the envelope proteins begin to travel through the ER Golgi transportation system, also called the exocytic pathway, to the plasma membrane. In the meantime, the newly made genome RNA is encapsidated by the nucleocapsid protein. 
During budding, the nucleocapsid interacts with the envelope proteins, which are still in pre-Golgi membranes. As a result, while wrapping itself in a piece of the host cell's membrane, the nucleocapsid buds into the lumen of the exocytic pathway to become enveloped. Subsequently, the virus follows the exocytic pathway to the plasma membrane, during which time the virion matures. Finally, fusion of the transport vesicles with the plasma membrane releases the new virus particles. They are now ready to infect more cells.